ins and fade outs. All fades in Pro Tools are generated in real time. You can edit your fades, move them around, and you can even audition the fades. You can also extend by the trimmer tool. We will talk about each one of them. Let's get started. Where we find our fades under our menu structure here would be the edit. And if you all if you go all the way down right here, you'll see I have an arrow, but it's completely grayed out. The reason because I haven't done anything on any of my clips. Just like we have these kind of similar situations, anything related to the clips before, I need to either select an area so I can apply and edit. Now it's not grayed out anymore. It gives me an option of creating a fade or fade to end. Let's talk about uh, fade to start and fade to end. To be able to do that, let me enlarge this a little bit. We need to have a point selection with the selector tool. And if we go under the edit, fades, we can fade to start or we can fade to end, which is going to start from the same point to the end. It's going to be a long fade out. Wherever you select in area, of course, the fade in is going to start from the left and fade out. It's going to start from there to the end point of my clip. Of course, most Pro Tools users don't go for fades like each one, the edit structures and scroll down. This is kind of taking time. There are shortcuts to that. If you select an area, let's say this is where it is, my edit selection. From here, you can actually use the shortcut of Option D to fade in and Option and Command C that and Option G to fade out. And if we are in a command focus mode, we could do these actions by just using the letter D. Then instead of command Z, you know, Z will do the same because I'm in command focus mode as long as this A to Z highlighted. If not, I wouldn't be able to get that. We covered all these earlier in the one on one course. So it's highlighting right now. We can press on G and get the fade out and Z to get rid of it again. So this is one easy way to get that, but this is if this is really applying when I select a point. If I select an area, then there's other fade features that I have. I can actually in the command focus mode, I can just like press on F to have a fade in. And if I select an area in in the end of the clip with letter F, I get a fade out and Z to get rid of these actions. And if I apply, select an area, let's say for this fade in, and if I wanted to uh, press Command F, then I have this like fades uh, dialog box with a couple of things in here that I could actually decide what kind of fade that I want that I could choose different fade let's say this one and press ok so I get a different kind of fade right now those kind of things and those could be set under preferences as well if you go the preferences under Pro Tools or setup menu you know that under here there's preferences too there's two way to get there and you can go to this fade settings right here under editing in preferences right here we have a fade uh, fade in and fade out default fade setting that you could actually set the way that you want here too same thing for the fade out it will give you the same dialog box so whenever you do a fade that will be the shape if you're uh, using one of those more often usually when we do that line is the pretty much the uh, one of the most used one but that can of course uh, that can be the default. They can be completely different other types of there are a ton of different types of fades that we could apply it depends on the situation. We will be talking about the dialog box in a second too. But this is how we um, 
this is how we uh, apply some of the fade ins and fade outs here and it will apply for any waveform basically that you can select the area you can press F um, and the sound of it actually before we move on if you're just like if you're not familiar let's solo this ARP press return to go begin of the session for instance if I have the area selected a quick fade and I press F this would be the fade effect you know it's very famous with the fade out for the songs a lot of songs uh, on records we hear ends with the fade out this is a, the, the typical uh, operation would be applied to the whole master um, we could choose something else to see this, how the sound different uh, we can actually double click we're going to talk about that in a second but we can adjust this fade a little bit differently for instance if this was the case and like go back to the top of course I choose the very extreme one uh, but we're gonna go ahead and learn how to audition let me just like talk about how we delete a fade in and fade out let's see I select it here as well um, with my selection I'm on the point let's say go on four we are on the we are on uh, bar four beginning of bar four you know it's also very important I just like for a second I went to the ruler to choose it but in Pro Tools you can actually go into different tracks individually you know right now everything's kind of flashing here whatever clip that we want to go we need to kind of select from there you see how it highlights now differently it's blinking differently because we are completely that's something I like on Pro Tools actually uh, so I'm talking about this one giving my example with this ar uh, arpeggio sound so I'm gonna go ahead uh, I'm in the uh, command focus mode so why don't I just press G to create a fade so I have this fade in and this fade out here uh, I would like to go and delete those it's very simple you can just go select the fade and press on delete so like with the grabber I'm in the smart uh, tool right now using the smart tool you know you get to the smart tool with just pressing at the top or just pressing one of the f6 f7 or f8 at the same time together you get that one then whenever it turns to grabber you select it delete it and it will go away um, there is another way to create a fade in and fade out actually that's when we are in a smart mode right here if I go end of this clip and let me enlarge this one so you see the shape it's the fade in and if I go to beginning it looks kind of different look where the white part and the way uh, the black part is you it shows this one is going to be kind of like a fade in for this clip and it's going to be the fade out and again you know you can of course Z command Z or delete the fade command option plus and minus sign zooms this is an Apple not a Pro Tools uh, shortcut so this is basically our fade ins and fade outs how the crossfade works let's go ahead and talk about that in order to talk about the uh, crossfades I need to bring clips together let's go with the grabber tool bring this clip over here so at this point you see at this point there's definitely it needs a fade it needs some sort of editing I can create a crossfade by just selecting an area and press on F it's smoother now you can see it's a huge difference with and without fade as opposed to shift command Z to bring the we have to get out of the fade if that if that's selected it's just gonna play that area in between the arrow you can just select it differently or just like bring this area before 
or if you want to hear the fade in and out points in the crossfade then basically you just need to go select and another way of creating a crossfade in a smart tool is just like going at the um, top or it's actually the bottom at the top we can still create a fade in and fade out we can create something like that will work but I just didn't create a crossfade so this is not super smooth you see it's just I completely lost the volume in a way so best way to do that really go down here and if you are selected on 5 and if you press on T Pro Tools bring this uh, point edit point the center of your screen as you see if you have it somewhere else you would kind of lose that point so it's always good to go select my uh, my area and if I am here and if I'm on the bottom you see my um, my fade in and fade out option turn into a crossfade here and it looks like a different kind of a tool right now so I can just grab and either go on one of the sites that you can go and that's creates a crossfade we can get rid of the crossfade area by just selecting by grabber and pressing on delete or if it's the right after the action you can Z command Z uh, this is about the crossfades if you wanted to create more crossfades let's go to this baseline for a second we'll go here and I like option drag another one here so at this point this baseline has got let's go here. let's say I want to let's select here on one of them and shift click right here so select everything if I want to create multiple fades I can go select the whole area and press on command F to get the batch fades area again uh, we have a couple of options here that we can um, talk about on the batch fades uh, you can adjust the length here it's 1500 but you can go there just click and type something else that shows us how much before and after yeah, I sometimes get a great effect with that too so let's just do this again to get the batch fades window so here in shape we can choose a standard standard or the S curve in shape and out shape automatically changes equal power and equal gain equal power it's uh, usually good for the situations that like if you're um, fading from two really different sound source can be an engine to like an instrument sound or something or like a speech equal gain more uh, for similar kind of if it's piano with a with another uh, piano clip let's say equal gain usually would be better most of the time we'll use the equal gain and placement changes in my fade view if I choose this pre splice right here it's gonna uh, it's gonna basically start a little bit before my edit point centered is gonna center we can actually go choose another kind of editing this will show a little bit better if I choose something else so this is a pre splice this is centered and if I go to the post one that's going to be like a more post and they're all gonna like be slightly different so I have a shape for the in shape and I have a shape for the out shape they're like both different ones let's go ahead and choose centered at this point and apply this so this is my fate <laughs> whatever really works in the situation so that's the batch fades window if you wanted to uh, apply fades more than one um, we're gonna talk about editing fades and we will talk about getting these 
uh, visuals right here. Let's say uh, I have an editing point here. Let's go back to the fade in right now, for instance, and put a fade in there by just oh, at this point F, of course, because I selected if that was only a point that will be D. So in order to get that one, I need to do this. So that's how we get it. Let's go ahead and like double click on it to get this fade. So double clicking will get us this one. And at this point, actually, I can even audition my fade. Let's start talking about this a little bit. I'm on the arpeggio sound again. When I have a, um, let's say, OK to this, let me show this area. By the way, with the trimmer, we can extend this. And with the grabber, we can actually change the size of the audio. We can shrink or stretch. Those kind of things are possible. So if you're not really happy with how it fades in and out, you can always shrink or stretch this by the trimmer. That's one little thing, info. Right here, if I double click, I get this fade. So I can actually go here and I can listen how my fade is starting uh, you can set that up under IO settings under setup you have an auditioning pad option this has to sign up it has to be one of your outputs if you're using and one and two choose or if you're having like a uh, audio interface you can uh, definitely choose any other outputs there but that should be selected and uh, properly set up so we can adjust the fades by auditioning so that's what the speaker does then i have here it's a uh, it's basically stereo file so we can hear on the right and left or both you can even adjust more than one fade at the time this is basically what it is for. And right here, actually, your arrows will zoom your fate or zoom out your fate. If you command click on one of these, it will get to the actual size. We're going to be talking about these little things in a second. Let me just talk about here under Pro Tools preferences, how we can set up uh, the fades again it's under editing however we uh, decided to adjust our fade and fade out operations or if you have want a different kind of curve you can adjust it there we said but you can also adjust the fades dialog preview pre-roll and the post roll right here and quick punch cross fade land you can also have um, and under crossfade, again, you can choose the shape, in shape, out shape, and you can choose if it's equal power, equal gain, or none. As again, equal power works better with different type of audio, and equal gain is similar type of audio. So depending on uh, what you're fading and what you're crossfading, you can link these the way that you like, or you could choose none. In shape options here, and the shapes are right here you could set up your crossfades right here as well. So that's under uh, editing, uh, under preferences. So go to the preferences under editing, entire fade section is there. So go back here for a second, uh, even with this or with the crossfades right here, let's say I put F and I want to get this fade dialog box. So what are these little things here? We so far learned that we can actually adjust. This green one is my fade out and the red one come in and fade in and type of fade that we have. So if you go up to this, uh, right next to the speaker, we talked about how we can hear the different channels or even more than one channels right here. I have this, uh, this, sign here if you press on it it turns white it shows only uh, the shape of the cross fades or if we were in the fades it will only show you the shape of your fade so at this point we don't see the audio for instance and then if we go to the second one 
that one is basically uh, crossfade superimposed over the waveform. So we see the waveform here. And again, you can apply uh, and bring them in the actual size bit command clicking. Um, however, that you want to adjust that actually. Um, I most of the time, if I go detail with the sh uh, the the fades, I get detail with the shape, depending on if I want a standard or the S curve, and then I go to this box and choose my different type of fades. Uh, but it can be very important depending on the situation, of course. And this next one right here uh, is the uh, both waveforms combined together kind of differently here. As you see, my stereo file right here, they are not combined together right here on this crossfade superimpose over the waveform option. But right here, actually, they are kind of combined. And then right here, what we see, one superimpose waveform. So basically, I can see the fade in and fade out uh, shapes right here. I mean, I see the shapes, but the waveform just like became only one piece, much different than this one. So however the visual that works for you, if you only want to see your shape of the fade and if you want to see the audio differently or only one piece, this is basically how you should adjust it right here. And auditioning is right here. Again, to be able to audition, we need to go to our I.O. settings and we have to go to the audition path. That's another thing. We covered that one too. And um, actually, that's kind of pretty much covering all our fades another way to get there as we said like under setup you can go to the preferences definitely under editing right here you have your uh, fade preferences that you could go over and um, they're definitely very very important especially this is an instructional uh, video and things kind of came on the grid but if you wanted to go to the slip mode for instance and if I want to cut somewhere which is not on the grid line and I want to edit another audio at the top of those things when those overlapping uh, places happens we need to really be very careful and specific with what kind of fades that we want and best judgment in my uh, opinion is our ears basically we always know how smooth that we want that fade to sound so what will happen if I basically on a slip mode and if I cut somewhere in the middle and if I bring another audio, that's going to kind of uh, pop. We're going to hear those like clipping sound and, and it's not going to be good. And when we do the fade, maybe line may not be the right fade for you at that point. You can always go and choose one of the other shapes. You can go try if it's a similar audio, you can try the equal gain. If that's not the case, maybe equal power. Of course, the best way to uh, best way our ears uh, for our ears to get used to it is just trying some examples and hearing what kind of shape will work with my fade in, my fade out, or the crossfades. We really need to kind of like audition those and see on different kind of situation what works the best. And as long as they sound smooth. That's really perfect. Let me just complete with one example. There's one song that I edited years ago. It was about to send to the mixing engineer and he found a lot of pops on my editing. He said, your fades are not good. So basically in those kind of cases, uh, mixing engineers would send your track directly back to you because they won't start. It's not their responsibility. They're gonna like think about the effects processing. They're gonna think about how to mix your song the best way. So if your editings are not fine, and if you're in that kind of situation, I highly recommend to take your time with the fades, especially slip based or non grid based operation fades becoming very important. Definitely solo them and listen them individually, your fade points and make sure you're choosing the right way to smooth those fade out. Uh, you may be in the situation to edit your songs and send to the mixing engineer and that tune, <laughs> that track can't be, can't be sent back. They won't start. 
um, more effects you f more effects you add also they're gonna sound kind of uh, worse as well so that's why this is very important I but I think we really really cover uh, pretty much everything that I can think of with the fade ins fade outs batch fades and the cross fades experiment with them and you'll find the best way for yourself also